And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, today we're taking a look at the new Smash Up expansion, Cease and Desist. Now this expansion, there's lots of factions in Smash Up at this point. I think they said there's like 38 now. And I like new factions, it adds to all the different variety. But this, you know, with all the different factions Smash Up, you're always like, ooh, can we have a Star Wars faction? Can we have a G.I. Joe faction? Well, they heard, you know, you can't do that because of licensing. But what you can do is parody, and that's what this one is, Cease and Desist. The name itself is based kind of, you know, ironic or sarcastic. I'm not sure what the terminology there is. But in this one, we have four factions, which are named differently, but essentially are Star Wars, Star Trek, Transformers, and Game of Thrones. Four very popular franchises. Um, and so those are now included in the game. That's cool that the parody's there. But are these fun factions to play? Let's see. So there's some new tokens in the game with laser bolts and these, and this is in case you're playing it as a two-player game. Because uh, if you're like me at all, you have way too many tokens at this point. So we're going to take a look at each faction, and we're going to actually take a look at the factions in uh, order from my least favorite to my favorite, okay? So first we're going to take a look at Star Roamers, who is obviously Star Trek. And of course they come with a red shirt or an ensign here. Well, when someone plays a card that affects one of your minions, you can have it affect this minion instead. Kind of useful, right? Someone's going to try to blow up your big minion, and hooray, you have this instead. And you can combine that kind of with the medical officer. If one of your minions would be destroyed, you can put it back in someone's hand. And if you have the medical officer and the ship's engineer, if someone's about to go back to your hand, you can move to another base instead. So you can actually, if you have both these on the board, they're two ongoing abilities, kind of protect all your minions. It's a good combo. Or here, you can return one of your minions of power four or less to its owner's hand and play an extra minion with a different name. And again, if you have the science officer mixed with the ship's engineer, it's comboing. And that's kind of the Star Trek model here. Here you can search the deck for minion and add it to your hand and put it in your deck. Power three or less played as an extra minion. Great. So not only can he let you pull any minion you want, but you can play him with the ship's captain. Of course, the captain always comes with somebody. And of course, his shirt is always being ripped off. This one's interesting. Choose a minion, move it to a random base. This can be kind of interesting. Here we have protector fields where your minions aren't affected by other players' cards. But there is some kind of cool cards. This is one I really like here. The Weird New Worlds. Here you play the top base from the base deck. And then you put an extra minion on that. So it's kind of like this random base that you suddenly have a minion on. And then so the next time, it's kind of like you're ahead of everybody else. Which is kind of a cool thing here. Uh, here's a base where you can put people anytime your minions would be returned to your hand. You can put them there instead. Very handy, letting you use your minions twice. Here you can return a, one of your minions to its owner's hand. Reveal any number of minions with the same name from your hand and play them as extra minions. So this deck here is, or this group here, is all about moving your minions around. Which is good. And I said I'm showing these in order from my least favorite to my favorite, but again, that doesn't mean I don't like all of them. In fact, I like all four factions. So let's take a look now here at Astronites, which is code for Star Wars. And I think they had so much material with Star Wars because Star Wars has more different cards than almost any faction. And their cards are often about increasing power. So here's the Ghost Knight. Old Ben here. You can't destroy this person. And your other minions there have plus two power. Very, very handy. And then the Alien Guru, uh, which looks like a cross between Yoda and Kermit and a blue creature. Anyway, you can once you do an action that increases their power, you can put a plus one power counter on it. So you can he helps increase power. So if you combine this faction with another faction that increases power, like the vampires, you can do really well. But they also have things to do with actions. Reveal the top card of your deck. If it's an action, return it. Destroy an action. Name a minion. All minions that with that name get minus two power. Really useful against the zombies. This card I'm not sure I'd like, the Poopox. You can lose a victory point to reveal the top three cards of your deck and draw them. And you can play one of them as an extra card. That's a neat ability, but to lose a victory point? I don't know. But here, Walking Carpet, before the base scores, if you're not winning, you can play an action that directly increases the power of this minion. That's kind of cool. Or the Scoundrel, who can go with one of your minions to another base. 
or the Space Prince. Is that Ghostbusters? Very strange here. Anyway, playing extra action that directly increases the power of one of your minions. So, and then the Space Knight, reveal the top three cards of the deck. You can draw one action from the reveal cards, return the rest in any order. So it's all about getting extra actions and getting power out there. Um, and then the other cards basically help with power. Here's a plus two for one of your minions. Here you can, and, or about getting more actions into your hand. So I like that here about drawing cards. Uh, this one, I like the laser sword. It gives your minion plus one power and it's not affected by other players. Minions, very powerful, cool card. Here's a minion that gets plus two power until the end of the turn. And you can play this before base scores or this really cool one of your minions gets plus four power until the end of the turn. Really enjoy this card. It can make you have one of the most powerful minions in the game. All right, now I like these two factions, but the next two factions I love. The first here is change your bots. Also, Transformers, or if you're cool, go bots. Now, these, this is probably for sheer power up there with the dinosaurs, probably. Because here you have a minion that can't be destroyed, and they can get plus two power, where, where, and then they can be destroyed. Um, but, ah, so what do you do? Two can't be destroyed, or I can make them a four, and they can be destroyed. Either way, I'm happy with it. Huffy, you can move into another base and give it minus one power. So she can move all over the place. Sure, she's only a two when she moves, but who cares? Although a transformer that changes into a bicycle doesn't seem super short, useful. Solar Shout lets you play an extra action, which gives him minus two. But the fact that you can play extra actions. Or Leader Two, which gives one of your minions plus two power until the end of the turn. And he's a six, which makes him one of the most powerful minions in the game. You can have one minion that, when this minion moves, you can move another minion with him. Or here, you can play on one of your minions and give them a power as if it was five. Then change into a gun, which of course is one of my... <laughs> I still think it's dumb to change into a gun. All right, but anyway, play one of, one of your minions to destroy a minion of power four or less there. Great. And then your minion has minus two power. So you can briefly hurt one of your minions to kill another minion. <laughs> um... For Megacon, um, or Mergicon, I'm sorry, and all your minions are a plus one power. Here, this minion now has ability where he gets plus three power but loses all other abilities. This one here, you can, this minion, you can move him to another spot, but then he's minus one power. Change up and roll on. You can move any number of minions before base scores. And this great armor here, plus one power, and they cannot be destroyed. So you can see that this deck is about sheer power. In fact, the Changer Bots, if someone's new to the game, this is one of the ones I would give them just because it's so useful. And then finally, we have the Ignobles, basically Game of Thrones. Now, they have a cool new thing that they can do. Here's the Sneaky Squire, where you can give control of this minion to another player to play an extra minion. So you give control. Now, the game is very clear that while you give control of this minion to somebody else, they are, you are still the owner of that minion. So you can play them. So why would you do that? And here's another one. You can give control of this minion to another player. The, but if this, another player wins this base and controls this minion, so if they win and you give this to them, you get a victory point. Still doesn't seem that useful. It's okay. Here's the Ant of Drakes. You can give control of one of your minions to another player to draw a card and play an extra action. Or give control of one of your minions to another player to draw two cards and play an extra minion. Give another player control of one of your minions to take control of one of their minions of equal or lesser power. Well, all this seems neat, but why would you do this? I mean, give, giving control to get a few extra things. Well, that's because you can do things like this. Each player destroys a minion they own. They own, not control. So I can give you one of my minions, and then I can destroy it. Or destroy a minion you own, and all minions with less power in the same base. Ha, ha, ha. The red birthday party will make everybody cry. Or each player returns a minion they own to their hand. So I gave you control, but then it goes back in my hand. Or here, the foot of the king here, with the golden foot, probably. At the end, I, I, I'm still, they should have made his foot gold. But anyway, at the end of your turn, you can take control of a minion you own. Great! So I give you control to him again, action, and then I take him back. Or before base scores, take control of the minion you own there. Or just banner call, take control of any number of minions you own. Or take control of a minion you own, play an extra action. So this is all about giving people control of your minions, and then taking it right back. There's also some new locations here. The changing room here. Uh, the Hive of Scum and Villainly, Villainly, which some people are going to use just based on the name. The USS Undertaking. The Spiky Chair Room. But there's also some of my favorite locations. This may be my favorite, the four locations 
When you place a minion here, you can give control of that minion to another player. Why would you do that? Well, if you're using Game of Thrones, first of all, it's very helpful. But secondly, second place here gets four points. Very cool thing. Also, neutral space. Minions here are not affected by each other player's minions there. So no one can kill anyone there. Thanks, Doctor Who. Then we have no moon. Before this base scores, you place a random other base and all the cards on it in the discard pile. It blows up another base. Ha, 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 ha. Sorry, that's cool though. And then Unicrave here, who's a zero, zero, zero. And this is basically just a random thing. You put guys on here hoping that when you flip over the top one from the pile, it's cool. Also, apparently this base eats worlds. Come on now. Thanks, Orson Welles. This is easily either... It's easily my second favorite faction, could vie for my favorite. And that's because I like all four factions in it. Now, I don't know how often I would play the Star Trek one when, if I'm choosing factions. It's, it's, it's neat and interesting. The Star Wars one, there's certainly a lot of, hey, I'm playing Star Wars and Smash Up, right? So I, I feel like that one's going to be played all the time, just so people can talk about having a walking carpet and make all sorts of Star Wars jokes. But it is a good faction. Um, but both of those, I would say, are good factions. But the other two, wow. You know what's fun? Mix Transformers with the robots from the original one, where they take these little weak robots and turn them into powerhouses, and you have a ton of them. Oh, oh that's such a great combo. Really like it. And it's also a cool thematic combo. Robots will destroy the universe. But they can be mixed with all sorts of things. Mix the Transformers with dinosaurs? Yeah, that's right. That makes sense thematically, too. <laughs> I love that theme-wise. Okay, so... I like them, they're a powerhouse, and the Game of Thrones I like because it feels different. It's just different. Give control to someone else and then take it back. It's sneaky, it's annoying, and if you mix it with some really cool uh, minions, maybe even minions that might hurt them if they take them, or just, uh, there's so many ways for that one to combo, and that's what I like about this set. Now, as always, this is a two-player game of itself, although most people don't play Smash Up two-player, they know this is essentially an expansion, and I've reviewed it as if you already know how to play it. But this is just a great fun expansion. It's fun because, hey, now we can use Star Trek and Star Wars and nobody's going to call them Star Knights and Ast or Astro Knights and Ignom. No one's going to call them that. They're just going to call them by what they are. And, and AEG knows that. So this is neat. I wouldn't even mind seeing a sequel to this with four other you know, IPs that are changed. Um, so th this was just a lot of fun. It shows that this franchise is still fresh even though there's many expansions come out, and I can't wait to add these to even more of the combos that are in the game already. Dice Tower Judgment, easily one of my favorite expansions into my collection. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door.